Good morning, everyone. This is Kellen on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you begin your day. First responders from across Kelloland paid their respects to a fallen firefighter who died in the line of duty. Fire trucks and other emergency vehicles lined the streets by the Chester Area High School Saturday for the funeral of 67-year-old Fred Fettler. He died last weekend after suffering a heart attack at the scene of a construction uh, structure fire in rural Madison. The Canton Volunteer Fire Department posted on Facebook that the amount of respect shown from other departments was outstanding. The family asked that donations in Feathers' honor be made to the Chester Volunteer Fire Department, Our Savior Lutheran Church, or the Dakota Heritage Hand Corn Husking Club. Investigators in Sioux Falls are looking into what sparked a fire on the east side of the city over the weekend. Sioux Falls Fire Rescue says crews were called to the 900 block of South Holt Avenue just before 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Firefighters arriving on scene found smoke coming from a garage. Officials say the fire was out within 10 minutes. No one was hurt. Sioux Falls police are investigating a weekend motorcycle crash that sent a 24-year-old man to the hospital. The crash happened Saturday afternoon at the intersection of 18th Street and West Equestrian Place on the city's west side. Investigators say the motorcyclist swerved to avoid another vehicle coming from the opposite direction. It's unclear whether the two vehicles collided. The biker has serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The National Sexual Violence Resource Center estimates more than 730,000 people were raped in 2018. Even with a strong support system, recovering from that trauma is not easy for survivors. Don Ospaz of Sioux Falls knows that all too well. In October 1989, she was at home with her nine-year-old daughter when two men snuck in, raped and beat her for hours, all while holding her daughter at knife point. The shock of everything that happens, it's hard for you to come out of that shock. Um, you're always on alert, and there are times in my life when I'm still on alert. But um, I park underneath lights now, and I make sure that I know all of my surroundings, and I know where I'm parked. And um, if I'm going to go out and show a property, I make sure I've checked out before, you know, what it's like. And I don't stand in front of bushes, and I don't, you know, all those kinds of things that you do for safety. In the 80s and 90s, it wasn't common for victims to confront their offenders or speak publicly about the crime, but Ospaz did. In tonight's Kelloland Investigates, Lauren Solick looks back at what prompted her bravery. And for the first time since that horrific night, we hear from her daughter. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Monk. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, Dan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, another windy day in eastern Kelloland, though not as windy as what we had yesterday. Another cool day for just about everybody with temperatures below average. Numbers this afternoon in the 50s and 60s. But we are looking at warmer weather to start tomorrow, and that trend will continue through at least midweek. And then we'll watch our rain chances start to pick up as we hit the tail end of the work week. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. As the weather finally warms up, many farmers are now in the field planting or just about to get started. We caught up with a farmer north of Parker yesterday who says they're getting started with planting corn and soybeans today. It's about a week or two later than normal after waiting for the ground to warm up after the long and cold winter. Any time after April 15th is, is a date that we could start. Um, but again, it, it, it's, it's a function of the soil temperature primarily. And if we're ready, and, and the guys. You know, the, the machines behind us, they were in the shop uh, probably for the last month and, and getting everything kind of fine-tuned. Anything that's uh, a part that might break or that's wore a little bit that's going to affect the, uh, the performance of them as we go, um, they got it fixed. And so we should be, for the most part, we always have something go on, but for the most part, we should be ready. Bone says the soil temperature should be at least 50 degrees for the seeds to germinate, but 60 or 70 is even better. He expects with the forecast this week, he should be good to go. Sioux Falls Golf opened its courses more than a month later than desired this spring. After starting the season in early March in recent years, golfers didn't step on the courses at Elmwood, Keene Park, or Prairie Green until mid-April this year. And everybody's excited just to be out after the long winter lot of snow they're just happy to be out here and play golf if you'd like to book a tea time we provide a link with this story on our website 
People in Canton came together Saturday night to help a local youth wrestling coach who's grappling with cancer. Dylan Swanson was diagnosed with testicular cancer in February. His brother, along with the Canton wrestling team, hosted a benefit auction to help with Swanson's medical treatments. My brother is my best friend, so when you know when you hear about things like this, it's probably the worst thing you can hear. Have had a tremendous amount of feedback and support from local community and family and friends. Swanson hopes to finish his chemo treatments by the end of May. You can find a link to the online fund to help pay for those medical expenses by going to this story here at Kelloland.com. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's go one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, as we start our week of weather, well, we're coming off of a chilly weekend with the wind at least, and obviously soil temperatures have been held down. Typically by this point on the calendar, you know, we are looking at 50 or better uh, as uh, we, of course, are watching how that affects germination and just the general growth of the plants. And look at the numbers this morning in the northeastern part of South Dakota between 42 and 45. And so we're definitely below where we should be. But our pacing is going to get better as we steer the winds out of the forecast. Today we got to deal with another day, though, of that and 50s for highs. Don't forget, too, with the dry uh, grasses, uh, fire danger is pretty high. That goes along with the territory. Forecast tonight will bring down the wind a little bit. We'll bring in chilly lows again, lows in the 30s. There will certainly be some freezing weather around. A little less wind tomorrow. High pressure, our fair weather friend here. That means temperature. Temperatures will be a little warmer, and then we'll try to probably bring in warmer weather on Wednesday. The morning lows can still be in the 30s, so if you're tracking that, keep that in mind through Wednesday. That's the potential, but then beyond that, we're probably opening the door to warmer overnight lows, warmer daytime highs. There could be a couple of things on radar sprouting as early as Thursday if this front materializes in the southeast, but I would say Friday. Saturday, that's when our rain chance is going to start going up. Uh, it'll start in the southwest, and then we'll see if that'll build toward Aberdeen this weekend. Um, jury's still out on how much rain we can get, but an upper level low, the way it's appearing, is more favorable for rain. One thing that works to our advantage if we're looking at rain, the Gulf of Mexico starts opening up because our dew points are going to be increasing, and you'll feel the difference in the air as uh, we get toward the end of the week. The way the things are painting out, too, on the European model, Model, definitely a little more aggressive on rain, not just for the weekend, but even early next week. So we'll see how that trend goes, but it definitely is looking a little better. Probably a good opportunity to put some seeds in the ground for farmers. I know they're busy now and likely going to ramp up that pacing this week here. 50s, low 60s, West River today. As we wrap up on your seven day forecast, those 70s are coming in line by Wednesday and Thursday. And then the temperature forecast may drop a little just due to some chances of rain uh, picking up Friday, Saturday. We'll be monitoring those probabilities. I think there's a chance for those to go up as uh, we get into the forecast. Aberdeen will delay your rain chance until Saturday, Sunday, but that too can easily become a little wetter time period. So that's the next thing to be watching. Notice overnight lows are better too, aren't they? 40s, even 50 for overnight lows in pier by the weekend. And daytime highs are primarily in the 70s. So I think we're at least turning a corner on this seven-day forecast. Rapid City starting at 60 today, 64 tomorrow. Here come those 70s. Do I hear an 80? Probably. Parts of Southwest South Dakota. Check out details online at kelloland.com.